Happy New Year, YouTubers. Cheers. Just finishing up, uh, well, I'm trying to finish up some of my pale ale that I brewed because the, uh, the hop character is really starting to fade now. So I'm going to try to drink it up and uh, get my keg ready for my new batch that I made. Apologies for my voice. Um, it's just kind of left me this, uh, this weekend. So hopefully I can get through this without it going too bad on you. But anyway, what I wanted to do was I got some requests from friends and family to do a, a best a best of 2010, and uh, I was you know, not really planning on doing that. So I thought, well, Chris told me he's going to shoot one. It's probably going to be up by the time uh, you see this. But anyway, I thought I'd go over some of my favorites, and then I have some of my uh, lesser favorites. But uh, I won't dwell on those too much. But I think I'm going to start with my uh, best bottles of 2010. Now, I didn't put them in any order as far as what's best, but I'll just kind of go through them. I'll start off with the brewery's Local Red. I just put that review up. Uh, reviewed that one early December. Just blew away my expectations of what a red ale could be. So it's fantastic, good hop character, and it got some oak aged beer that they blended in. Really nice. So Founders Nemesis 2010. If you saw my video, I did that for my 100 subscribers. Um, I give that one A+. Uh, one of the best beers I had all year for sure. Next up is another one I believe I give an A+, too. That's Port's Older Viscosity. Unbelievably awesome beer. I, I didn't have as high expectations because the previous year's batch was completely flat. But um, thankfully it was carbonated this year and it was utterly amazing beer. Definitely one of the best of the year. Another one that blew me away and I wasn't expecting it was St. Bernard's Christmas Ale. Um, that's a fantastic Belgian strong dark ale. Um, yeah, I, I, I need to get more balls of that if I can still find it. Excellent, excellent beer. Another one that I heard great things about and lived up to the hype was Great Lakes Edmund Fitzgerald Porter. I uh, got that one in trade from Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. That's excellent, excellent American Porter, one of the best American Porters I've had. Finally, uh, Firestone Walker 14. Um, that's an amazing blend that Firestone's done. It, it doesn't really have a category. It's not really an Imperial Stout. It's not really a barley wine. Uh, it's its own thing. It's its own style. I mean, call it a strong if you want, but... Wow, that, that's, I, can't, I have a bunch of those and I'm going to be uh, drinking some up soon and then I'm hopefully going to age the rest of them. If I did have to pick a number one beer, it would probably be Firestone Walker's Parabola. That is one of the components of Firestone 14, but on its own, Parabola is amazing, amazing barrel-aged, imperial, I believe oatmeal stout. Um, it's 14% beer that drinks like an 8%. Prowl is such a well-constructed beer that um, it, it just blew me away. I was hoping it was really good. I actually had it on draft, and I didn't like it as much. It was still good, but maybe it was too cold, and I didn't let it warm up as much as it should, but out of the bottle, just amazing beer. So my 50th review, I did the brewery's Cotton, and that was another fantastic beer. That's their old ale, big, big old ale at 14%. Um, really nice, complex flavors on that beer, and... Uh, the alcohol was there, but um, I have another bottle that I'm going to age and see how it holds up. Uh, Alesmith's Horny Devil. It's been a while since I've had Horny Devil, their Belgian Golden Strong Ale, so I did a shot review with my cousin and we picked up a bottle at the brewery when we were there, and man, that's a fantastic, fantastic beer. Next up, I had a lot of fun doing Stone's Vertical um, Epic Series. I did reviews of nine... Uh, 8, 9, and 10. 8 was good, but it didn't quite make my list. Mine was 06, which I actually had at the brewery, poured out of a bottle. And then 9 inspired me to brew a beer, so that's always a good sign. Love love 9. And then 10, the new ones, I thought drinks awesome right away. I, I can't wait to see how it's going to taste in a year from now. I have one stashed away for that, but I thought it was a really tasty beer. Um, also, I did a series of the Russian River Wild Ales, and my favorite was their Consecration, which was Asian Barrels of Currants. Um, real nice, tart wild ale from them. 
Uh, third beer from Firestone Walker, their Velvet Merlin Oatmeal Stout. I mean, 5.5% sessionable oatmeal stout that tastes fantastic. Uh, great brewery, Firestone Walker. Uh, Ballast Point Sculpin. I got it in Sculpin this year. Um, it's in six packs now. Um, it remains, since I could get it probably fresher than a lot of you, to be one of the best IPAs in the country. Um, not, also, a real nice collaboration effort from Stone Ballast Point and a guy who won the uh, home brewer contest, Kelsey McNair. They did their San Diego County Session Ale. Kind of like a traditional English style bitter, but then they hopped it up big time. That's the inspiration for this beer that I'm drinking right now. So anytime you get a like, beer that just influences something I want to brew, that's always, I always really like that. And uh, I did mine a little differently than theirs, but it turned out great. I also got to finally try Alpine's Nelson. It's the first time I had the Nelson Sauvin hot variety in a beer. And they also added some rye to that IPA and it blew me away. It's one, of, it's one of the best IPAs in the county. Up there with West Coast IPA and Sculpin and Ruination, you know, all those classics. Um, something, there's a few things that I didn't quite review on here, but Avery's Maharaja. That was the first IPA that I had that it blew me away that I really, really liked. It just, it was literally a beer that I took a first sip and said, wow, because I never had a beer like that before. I've had some that come close to it now, but that remains one of the best IPAs in the country. Uh, Oscar Blues 1050. Um, I never thought of buying uh, craft beer in a can, but I did start with Oscar Blues' uh, Old Chub, which is a fantastic uh, Scotch Ale. So I'm going to get to that one eventually, but... 1050 out of a can, Imperial Stout, uh, fantastic. It was fun, I went to my first beer release at Lost Abbey for their Deliverance beer, which is a blend between Serpent Stout and Angel Share. Um, two great individual beers, and they blended them together real nice, get the oak aging in there, fantastic beer. And the last one I just brought out for Christmas, uh, didn't do a review, was the, uh, the Jitter Den Goose uh, 1882 Black Label. It's my first proper, you know, Belgian uh, goose, and it was fantastic, and it's widely available, and I'm going to get another bottle, do a review of it, but if you're into, like, sour beers, that's a fantastic one. Okay, so I want to write down some of my biggest surprises, beers that just caught me off guard, but didn't quite fit into, like, the best category, so they didn't quite blow me away, but I liked them more than I thought I would. First up is Lightning's Elemental Pilsner. I'm not a huge fan of lagers. Um, I do enjoy... Uh, Sam Adams uh, Noble Pills. That's a I thought a great Pilsner, very flavorful. But uh, Lightning's Elemental Pilsner is uh, even better than that. It's fantastic. Didn't expect to like them as much as I did. Carl Strauss. They put out their Big Barrel Double IPA. Um, unbelievable that Carl Strauss put out that awesome of a double IPA. Uh, it's one of the best double IPAs I've had up there with Maharaja. Uh, I haven't had fresh uh, Hop Slam yet, so I can't compare it to that. But one of the best uh, double IPAs. They also use the Nelson Sauvignon Hot Variety. Deschutes Jubal Ale. I, I've always passed on that beer for some reason, and I finally decided to buy a six pack, and I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great little winter warmer, something to get get me away from you know some of the hops or uh, stouts or you know all the all the other styles that I really really like. So being a kind of winter warmer. A little different, not quite an old ale or barley wine, but um, I thought I really enjoyed it. Um, I do have one left, I might review it. Another surprise, Stone's collaboration with Dogfish Head and Victory, the Saison du Buff. I didn't expect to ever like a beer with parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme in it, but um, they did an amazing uh, beer that it had a real nice, uh, excellent aroma on it. Uh, fantastic taste. It was unique. Um, I did get to try that fresh uh, the week of release at Stone and uh, thought it was a great beer. Really surprised me. Another one because I didn't know what exactly it was but Alpine has a pumpkin ale called Ichabod. What I didn't realize is this is actually a, uh, a sour pumpkin ale. It caught me off guard big time. Uh, really enjoyable. And the last one I just mentioned Sam Samuel Adams Noble Pills. Uh, didn't expect to like that beer at all. It just came in, you know, one of those 12 packs, 24 packs that you get, and I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. You know, something to, to drink with a meal or something, but really enjoyed it. So for my best, my brewery of the year, I decided, um, if you can't tell from the list already, Firestone Walker, uh, amazing brewery up in Central California. 
Uh, everything they put out is great, between their special releases and even their ordinary ales. And then my brew pub of the year, Pizza Port Carlsbad, um, just amazing beers. They're, if you've seen all the medals they've won, Great American Brew Festival, uh, they deserve it completely. It's, I've had some amazing beers at that place. So I'm going to move on to the some of the worst uh, or beers that didn't live up to my expectations list for bottles. Starting off with Port's High Tide. I heard some great things about this beer. Got a bottle and didn't taste right at all. Just lacked real like fresh hop characters. I don't know what went wrong with that beer, but it was just not very good. And I've had it several times on tap since then. And it's just... It's really, really mediocre for port. They usually do really nice stuff. I did a review of uh, Hermitage's Hoptopia. That was like a really weak uh, double IPA, I believe it was. Uh, a couple beers from Alpine I didn't care for. One's Willy. It's pretty much like a, just an ultra light ale, kind of like a lagerish ale. It's just, it's for you know the people that want to drink Budweiser but want to go to Alpine. And then the regular Alpine Ale is a pale that I didn't really care for either. Um, another disappointment was Left Coast is hop juice. Um, wasn't I mean they made a big deal by using all these hops in it? The extract, whole cone pellets. Maybe I got a bad bottle, but it wasn't very good. And I was gonna maybe review, but then because Chris, I saw his review and he didn't care for it. But Dogfish Head, their worldwide stout. That's a mess of a beer. Um, you get like. Tastes like nail polish when it warms up too much. It's it's not a good beer, guys. Uh, go back to the drawing board on that one. Um, I did get to trade some stuff from New Glarus, and they had a beer called Spotted Cow that that was really mediocre. I mean, I heard good things about the brewery, but I don't know. Maybe that's just supposed to be an easy drinking beer that they do, but that was pretty mediocre. And then I think their Fat Squirrel was like a brown ale. That was like okay at best, but I did like their Unplugged Enigma. That was tasty, though. And then finally, uh, Avery and Russian River did a collaboration beer. Collaboration, not litigation, was the name of it. And I bought it because it was Avery, and I've really gotten into Avery beers, and they're a great brewery. They're right behind probably Firestone Walker on my list for best brewery of the year because I've enjoyed a ton of stuff from them. But this one was just, um, and then I found out that Russian River was collaborating. It was just yeah, mess of a beer. Didn't like it. So then I put together best uh, on draft list because I did come across some really good ones. If you've seen my uh, festival videos, you'll recognize a few of these, but Coronado Brewing Company did an Imperial Smoked Brown Ale that they aged in bourbon barrels that was fantastic. Um, great, great beer. I actually had got to have it at both festivals. Really enjoy that one. Excellent beer. Sierra Nevada does a, uh, I believe it's a, pizza, a, a collaboration with Pizza Port. Um, called the Empire Strikes Black, and it's an imperial stout. Uh, utterly fantastic. I had that back to back with Parabola, and on tap, I like that one better than Parabola. Um, Pizza Port has a big long list of all their beers. Hop Suey, I did a video on that one. Amazing, amazing double, even probably like triple IPA if you want to call it that. They up in uh, San Clemente, they do Infamous, which is the uh, uh, coffee imperial stout, or imperial porter actually, I think. That was really good. Night Rider. That's Peace Port Carlsbad's Imperial Stout. It's excellent. I also got to have it on a cask with cocoa nibs, and then they also did a dry hop version of it. Amazing beer. Won a medal this year, along with Coffee Monster. That was their uh, coffee beer that tasted just like fresh coffee mixed with a great stout. Excellent. And then the, uh, Peace Port has a ton of great IPAs, but for me, Poor Man's IPA was my favorite. It just had excellent tropical fruit notes. Um, Beats the crap out of uh, any like Russian River playing the Elder. I mean that this IPA to me fresh wipes the floor with with playing the Elder. Another great uh, brewery beer from a brewery up in Temecula, North San Diego, Black Market. They have a really nice rye IPA, and I believe they won an award for that one. Yeah, one of the festivals I got to have Alpine's Duet, uh, one week old. Uh, keg of Duet. That was amazing beer. Uh, it, it is really good beer in a bottle. I did a written review for the Beer Geek Nation, but on, that was amazing on draft. Uh, Port Brewing Mongo IPA. That one that we're actually going to start bottling really soon. It's uh, Imperial IPA. I think you guys are going to really like that one. I, I enjoy it. And then I had Older Viscosity with Cocoa Nibs and Tea that they had for the Barrel Night. This was almost going to be the Veritas 008 release, and I wish it was, but 
It's one of the best beers I've ever had. Unfortunately, I don't know if I'll ever have it again. Uh, Alesmith has a brown ale, nautical nut brown. That is fantastic. They, I wish they would bottle it. Uh, it's probably the best brown ale I've ever had. It's amazing. It's got really nice roast notes, uh, nuttiness. It's, it's just fantastic. And they also, I had their Decadence 2010, which is their old ale on cask. That was amazing beer on cask. Carl Strauss, they did a uh, draft only beer, a Flan Diddley Anders Red. Not only is that one of the best names for a beer I've ever heard, but it was a really solid Flanders uh, Red, good tartness. A couple other festival beers that I really enjoy that are draft only. Boss Points Refry Ale, really nice. They're using a, a hop variety I've never heard of in there. They're, they're kind of dry hopping with coriander, um, and they're using some, some rye malt in there as well. Really tasty stuff. Automatic Brewing, who's like, a, I guess it's a glorified home brewer guy or something, but um, I think they're down at Hamilton's Pub. They had a wit beer at one of the festivals that was very, that's one of the best wit beers I've had. And a couple more draft only. Green Flash did a fire roasted pumpkin ale that's one of the best pumpkin ales I've had. I would probably put that just below pumpkin probably for my uh, list. I put it sl I, I would like it better than Weyerbacher's, but I put it right below. And it's a 5% beer. It's not even an imperial pumpkin ale. Um, excellent. Then something that was really awesome I got to try at a local uh, beer bar was I got to do a vertical of the shoots, the abyss. I got to do the 07. 08 and 09. And the 09 was not infected. So that tasted great. So that's my list for this year. Uh, looking forward to 2011. I have a bunch of great beers I need to get to. Um, I will get to Black Tuesday this year. So I hope you guys had a good New Year's. Until next time, cheers.